So hi everyone and a very good morning to all of you. Welcome back once again to another session of PIB 247. So I wish you guys a very happy new year and I hope ये आपका new year बहुत अच्छा रहे और जो भी आप चाहते हैं वो आपको मिले. Monday को session मैंने नहीं रखा था क्योंकि new year parties का hangover उतरना था तो वो भी जरूरी था ताकि आप लोगों का hangover उतरे. But now let's back to the study and as you all know the RBI gate by examination uh, is expected. The the phase one is expected to happen on first of April two thousand and twenty three. So please gear up your preparations now. Ab jo hai, bilkul high time hai that you start your studies. All right. So let's begin with the session without any delay and let's talk about the very first question, which is about the Amrit Bharat Station Scheme of the Ministry of Railways. So Ministry of Railways has formulated a new policy for modernization of railway stations, uh, which is named as Amrit Bharat Station Scheme. So one thing is very much clear. That this Amrit Bharat Station Scheme is for modernization of railway stations, right? Now, of course, how uh, modernization of uh, railways or modernization of railway stations can be done by developing the modern infrastructure, right? It aims at infrastructural development of railway stations on a continuous basis with a long-term vision. How many railway stations are envisaged for development under it? How many railway stations का infrastructure डेवलप किया जाएगा एंड द फोकस विल बी ऑन आई टी इनेबल्ड इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर एज वेल राइट सो लेट्स टॉक अबाउट द न्यूज एंड लेट्स टॉक अबाउट दिस स्कीम अमृत भारत स्टेशन सो क्वेश्चन से ऑलरेडी क्लियर है दैट अमृत भारत स्टेशन स्कीम हैज बिन लॉन्च बाई मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ रेलवे हेडेड बाई मिस्टर अश्विनी वैष्णव एंड दिस स्कीम इज फॉर मॉडर्नाइजेशन ऑफ रेलवे स्टेशन राइट नाउ द डिटेल ऑब्जेक्टिव इफ आई टॉक अबाउट द डिटेल ऑब्जेक्टिव सो वट विल हैपन इज दैट A master plan will be prepared. A master plan will be prepared for all the railway stations which are targeted to be covered uh, under the scheme, and that uh, master plan will be implemented in phases to enhance the facilities beyond minimum essential amenities. So basically, now the government of India through Ministry of Railways is looking for uh, is looking beyond the minimum essential amenities which are available, which are currently available at the railway stations. Right now, they want to. Upgrade the infrastructure, coverage thousand stations. Right, the scheme invites this infrastructure development of more than thousand stations. So, अभी के लिए thousand station आप एक number याद रखेंगे, and it will be implemented as per the needs and patronage of the railway station. Whatever are the needs of the railway stations, whatever are the uh, whatever is the patronage of the railway station, uh, this plan will be uh, implemented accordingly. Right. and these are some of the key features uh, of the schemes which are not important for the exams but yes you can give a, a quick read to it like what type of facilities they are they will develop uh, like for example good cafeteria retail facilities will be developed waiting halls ko thoda sa high tech banaya jayega right and iske alawa jo redundant old buildings hai unko cost efficient manner ke sath improve kiya jayega so everything related to infrastructure will be developed under this scheme right and remember 1000 stations are currently targeted so if i talk about this question so how many stations are invited so it is 1000 option e is the correct answer all right let's talk about question number 2 then ministry of power has launched the revamped distribution sector scheme to help discoms improve their operational efficiencies and financial sustainability by providing result linked financial assistance to distribution companies you have to identify incorrect statement about this scheme so remember first of all it is not a new scheme it was launched in the year 2021 last year it launched hua tha uh, by the ministry of power right it is in news because these days all the ministries are presenting their uh, uh, year long performance right how they have performed in the year 2020 so they are presenting their performance so in that i uh, i found this scheme as important to be to be discussed again so that's why this scheme is here so revamped distribution scheme uh, distribution sector scheme is being implemented by ministry of power since last year 2021 with an objective to help distribution companies right the distribution companies are those which distributes electricity to the consumers to the households right and these distribution companies will be helped Uh, by improving their operational efficiency and financial sustainability sustainability by providing result linked financial assistance performance linked uh, financial incentive assistance will be provided or in fact is being provided to the distribution companies right now uh, 
टॉकिंग अबाउट द टारगेट अंडर द स्कीम सो द टारगेट ऑफ द स्कीम इज रिडक्शन ऑफ एग्रीगेट टेक्निकल एंड कमर्शियल लॉसेज टू पैन इंडिया लेवल ऑफ ट्वेल्व टू फिफ्टीन परसेंट बाई फाइनेंशियल ईयर ट्वेंटी फाइव फाइनेंशियल ईयर ट्वेंटी फाइव के एंड तक बारह से पंद्रह परसेंट तक लेके आ जाएंगे किसको एग्रीगेट टेक्निकल एंड कमर्शियल लॉसेज को एंड ऑफ कोर्स टू इंप्रूव क्वालिटी रिलायबिलिटी एंड अफोर्डेबिलिटी ऑफ पावर सप्लाई बाय सपोर्टिंग बाय प्रोवाइडिंग फाइनेंशियल असिस्टेंस टू द डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन कंपनीज राइट टोटल आउटले फॉर द स्कीम इज रुपीज थ्री पॉइंट जीरो फोर लैख करोर्स एंड एज आई ऑलरेडी टोल्ड यू गाइज दैट इट वॉज लॉन्च लास्ट ईयर इन टू थाउजेंड एंड ट्वेंटी वन इनफैक्ट लास्ट टू लास्ट ईयर नाउ इन टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी वन इसको लॉन्च किया गया था फॉर दिस पीरियड ऑफ फाइनेंशियल ईयर ट्वेंटी टू टू फाइनेंशियल ईयर ट्वेंटी सिक्स ऑल राइट सो विच इज द पीरियड ऑफ फिफ्टीन फाइनेंस कमीशन आई होप यू ऑल नो दिस फिफ्टीन फाइनेंस कमीशन का पीरियड क्या है फाइनेंशियल ईयर ट्वेंटी टू टू फाइनेंशियल ईयर ट्वेंटी सिक्स ठीक है एंड अंडर द स्कीम द प्रीपेड स्मार्ट मीटर्स द प्रीपेड स्मार्ट मीटर्स आर बींग इंस्टॉल्ड एंड हाउ मेनी प्रीपेड स्मार्ट मीटर्स विल बी इंस्टॉल्ड टू फिफ्टी मिलियन विच इज टू ट्वेंटी फाइव करोर्स एंड फॉर दिस द टोटल आउटले इज रुपीज वन लैख फिफ्टी थाउजेंड करोर्स नाउ वन लैख फिफ्टी थाउजेंड करोर्स विल बी प्रोवाइडेड ओनली फॉर इंस्टॉलेशन ऑफ प्रीपेड स्मार्ट मीटर्स एंड हाउ मेनी स्मार्ट मीटर्स विल बी इंस्टॉल्ड टू ट्वेंटी फाइव करोर्स और यू कैन से टू फिफ्टी मिलियन All right, so that is all about this scheme, and now let's identify the incorrect statement. It is being implemented for a period of five years. That is from financial year twenty one twenty two to financial year twenty five twenty six. सही बात है, no problem. It has set target to reduce aggregate technical and commercial losses to pan India levels of twelve to fifteen percent by financial year twenty five. ये भी सही है. Total outlay of the scheme is rupees three point zero four lakh crores. This is also correct. 500 million pre uh, prepaid smart meters are targeted to be installed so is the number 500 million no the number is 250 million right so this is incorrect which means option d is the correct answer because we have to identify the incorrect statement right question number 3 pe aa jate hain next which is national education society for tribal students uh, will be organizing two days face to face capacity building program For EMRS, which are Eclavia Model Residential School, which are specially meant for the tribal students, right? Uh, EMRS teachers. It is organized to implement Amazon Future Engineering program in collaboration with the Learning Links Foundation. This program will be launched in around 54 EMRS across six states. Which of the following is not among the six states? So basically, a capacity building, a capacity building program, a face-to-face -face capacity building program. Uh, has been organized by nest which is national education society for tribal students now this capacity building program uh, has been organized to implement the amazon future engineer program in collaboration with learning links foundation right it is a philanthropic organization learning links foundation so basically this capacity building program was for implementing amazon future engineering program in the eclavia model residential schools right and capacity building program for whom for teachers of these schools right kin ke liye tha ye teachers ke liye tha jo is school ke teachers hai right now talking about amazon future engineering program so of course when there is this word amazon so basically it is the project of amazon as a part of its csr activity and under this program the objective is to increase the access to computer science education uh, for children and young students jo स्टूडेंट्स हैं उनके बीच में कंप्यूटर साइंस एजुकेशन की अवेयरनेस बढ़ाना या कंप्यूटर साइंस एजुकेशन एज अ होल बढ़ाना दैट इज दी ऑब्जेक्टिव एंड दीज स्टूडेंट्स मस्ट बिलोंग टू अंडर सर्व एंड अंडर रिप्रेजेंटेड कम्युनिटीज एंड दैट इज वाई दिस प्रोजेक्ट इज बींग इंप्लीमेंटेड इन ए क्लब मॉडल रेजिडेंशियल स्कूल बिकॉज दिस स्कूल इज बेन फॉर द ट्राइबल स्टूडेंट्स राइट हु आर अंडर रिप्रेजेंटेड और यू कैन से अंडर सर्व इन द कंट्री implementing agency clear amazon implemented by philanthropic organization llf and it is a comprehensive childhood childhood to career program in the area of computational skill training for students and teacher of club a model residential school so basically in short if i talk about amazon future engineering program so basic uh, kya hoga uh, initially the training the the awareness regarding the computer science education will be provided or you can say computer science as a subject will be taught 
टू द स्टूडेंट्स राइट एंड देन उनकी मदद की जाएगी टू टेक टू अडॉप्ट करियर इन दिस फील्ड ओनली ओके Now talking about implementation in EMRS, so it will be launched in around 54 e EMRS in six states, which are Andhra Pradesh, Gujarat, Madhya Pradesh, Odisha, Rajasthan, and Telangana. Right? So these are the six states where this Amazon Future Engineering program will be implemented. ठीक है? So that is all about this news. And now let's come back to the question: Which of the following is not among the six states? So the, the six states: Andhra Pradesh. गुजरात मध्य प्रदेश उड़ीसा राजस्थान एंड तेलंगाना सो उत्तर प्रदेश इज नॉट ऑप्शन ई इज द करेक्ट आंसर यू हैव टू रिमेंबर द नेम ऑफ द सिक्स स्टेट्स राइट यू कैन नॉट इग्नोर द नेम्स क्वेश्चन नंबर फोर इट इज इंपॉर्टेंट एज पार्ट ऑफ इंडिया जी ट्वेंटी प्रेसिडेंसी मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स एन आई टी अगेन हेडेड बाय अश्विनी वैष्णव हैज लॉन्च स्टे सेफ ऑनलाइन कैंपेन Which of the following are the three priority digital areas of India's G20 presidency? जो इंडिया की G20 presidency है, उसमें Ministry of Electronics and IT uh, has set the three priority digital areas. So you have to identify those three priority digital areas. But before that, let's talk about the news. The news is the uh, Stay Safe Online campaign has been launched by Ministry of Electronics and IT as part of India's G20 presidency. now what is this stay safe online campaign so as the name says this the objective of this campaign is to raise awareness among the citizens to stay safe online theek hai online mein jab bhi hum jate hain to safe rahe uske liye awareness create karna is the objective of this campaign and nodal ministry is clear the targeted group almost every section of the society citizen of all age group especially children student women senior citizens specially able so i think Every section of the society uh, is the targeted group. Is the targeted, uh, you know, targeted benefit will be the targeted beneficiary of this campaign. Languages. This campaign will be carried out in English, Hindi, and some of the local languages. Taki iska reach zada rahe. And during the G20 presidency, Ministry of Electronics and IT has identified three priority digital areas, which are digital public infrastructure, cyber security. and digital skill development right so these are the three priority digital areas identified by ministry of electronics and it as part of india's g20 presidency theek hai so now let's come back to the question so which are the three areas digital public infrastructure cyber security digital skill development which means 1 3 and 5 option c will be the correct answer let's move ahead to question number 5 then which is again based on g20 uh, india's presidency g20 digital innovation alliance has been launched as part of india's g20 presidency this is again uh, something which is important it aims to identify recognize and enable the adoption of innovative and impactful digital technologies in six themes developed by startups from g20 nations as well as the invited non member nations which of the following are the Six themes. Which of the following are amongst the six themes? Yes. So let's talk about the new G20 Digital Innovation Alliance has been launched as part of India's G20 presidency. Now this alliance, what will this alliance do? This alliance will reduce the digital divide and enable the sustainable and inclusive techno social economic development, which means social economic development through technology. Right? Technology will be used. for socio economic development that is the basic objective of g20 digital innovation alliance now when we are talking about socio economic development so there must be some focused areas so these are the six focused areas or you can say six focused themes based on which this D g20 digital innovation alliance will work these are agri tech health tech ed tech fintech secured digital infrastructure and circular economy all right talking more about it and a summit summit will also take place theek hai g20 digital innovation alliance summit will take place in bangalore kahan pe hoga ye bangalore mein hoga and the objective will be to recognize and support the startups creating cutting edge digital solutions in those six themes un jo startups in che themes uh, ya fir che focus area mein kaam kar rahe hain unko support kara jayega right so that is all about this news and the six 
themes are agritech health tech ed tech fintech secure digital infrastructure and circular economy so i think the correct answer will be what all of the above option e question number 6 is about city beauty competition so ministry of housing and urban affairs has launched two initiative one is city beauty competition and next is in the next news city beauty competition has been launched to encourage wards and cities to showcase their initiatives and interventions for creating functionally beautiful public spaces and also to preserve their rich cultural heritage you have to identify the correct statement about this competition so let's talk about the competition and let's and then we'll come back to the question so first of all it has been launched by ministry of housing and urban affairs headed by this handsome can you identify this uh, this guy this is mr hadeep singh puri he is the minister of housing and urban affairs and the minister of petroleum and natural gas as well right so city beauty competition why this has been launched so it has been launched to encourage the wards and cities to showcase their initiatives of how they have created functionally beautiful public spaces right उन्होंने किस तरीके से कौन से इनिशिएटिव लिए हैं ताकि उनके उन्होंने पब्लिक स्पेसेस को ब्यूटीफुल और फंक्शनल बनाया है राइट एंड आल्सो टू प्रिजर्व देयर रिच कल्चरल हेरिटेज सो दैट इज द बेसिक ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ दिस कंपटीशन एंड द वॉर्ड्स एंड पब्लिक स्पेसेस ऑफ द सिटीज विल बी जस्ट ऑन दीज फाइव पैरामीटर्स एक्सेसिबिलिटी अमेनिटीज एक्टिविटीज एस्थेटिक्स एंड इकोलॉजी very important you have to remember these uh, five parameters or pillars right now remember one thing that it is not mandatory for all the wards and cities to participate in this competition it is completely voluntary it is completely up to them whether they want to participate in this competition or not and the wards and cities who want to participate in it they have to register they will have to register on a portal city beauty portal which will be developed by ministry of housing and urban affairs knowledge partners administrative staff college of india right this portal will be developed it is not there currently okay evaluation will be done by independent in, uh, jury and of course uh, the awards will be given to the winners okay so that is all about this news and let's identify the correct statements it was launched by niti aayog is that so no it was launched by ministry of housing and urban affairs it will judge wards and public spaces of cities against the five broad pillars absolutely correct it is mandatory for wards and cities to participate in it i just told you guys it is not mandatory it is voluntary incorrect entries by wards or cities will be evaluated by an independent jury bilkul sahi baat hai 2 and 4 should be the correct answer option c option c will be the correct answer 2 and 4 because we have to identify correct statements let's talk about question number 7 then city finance ranking so this is the second initiative which has been launched by ministry of housing and urban affairs uh, so city finance ranking was launched recently to evaluate recognize and reward the ulbs which are urban local bodies on the basis of their strength across financial parameters now you have to identify incorrect statement about this ranking right so let's talk about the uh, city finance ranking so ministry of housing and urban affairs it is again theek hai and there is no ministry of uh, finance here finance ke naam pe ministry of finance se confuse mat ho jana please don't get confused with ministry of finance right it is ministry of housing and urban affairs now the objective is to evaluate recognize and reward the urban local bodies on the basis of their strength across different financial parameters now which are these financial parameters by the way so these are the three financial parameters which are resource mobilization expenditure performance and number 3 is fiscal governance right based on these three parameters the cities will be ranked okay abhi ranking nahi aayi hai cities ko rank di jayegi the cities will be ranked at the national level on the basis of their scores under four population categories which are above 4 million between 1 to 4 million between 100k and 1 million and less than 100k right and the top 3 cities in each population category will be recognized and rewarded at the national level top 3 cities ko national level pe recognize kiya jayega theek hai all right so let's come back to the question now now 
not to identify the incorrect statement. It was launched by Ministry of Finance. No, it will evaluate ULBs on 15 indicators across three key municipal finance assessment parameters. Sahi baat hai. It will rank cities at the national level on the basis of their scores under six population category. There are four population categories. All right. And it will also recognize top five cities in each population categories, not top five cities. Top three cities will be judged, will be ranked. Okay, so one, three, and four are incorrect, which means option B will be the correct answer. One, three, and four. Right? One, three, and four. Okay. And now let's move ahead to the questions in short, which do not need much explanation and if you want to have the pdf of this session you can join the telegram channel the link is provided in the description and if you want to ask anything related to examination only related to examination you can follow me here okay so let's talk about question number eight it should be question number yes question number eight which app has been launched by csir central road research institute to connect farmers to the supply chain and pre-transportation management system. Very, very important question. Okay. And yes, this is app. Nahi hai. Ye news mein aaya hai. That is why I have taken a question here. So, name of the app. You just have to identify the name of the app. So, regarding this app, only three things are important. Which agency has launched it? So, it is CSIR, CRRI, which is located in Delhi. What is the objective? It is connecting farmers to the supply chain. And number three, the name of the app, which is Kisan Sabha app. Option C is the correct answer. Government of India and ADB has signed a $125 million loan to develop climate resilient uh, sewage collection and treatment and drainage and water supply systems in three cities of which state. This question has been repeated hai. But once again, okay, if it news, then we will do it again. It is Tamil Nadu. Option B is the correct answer. Now, can you tell me where are the headquarters of ADB? Write down in the comments. Very easy question I'm asking. Where are the headquarters of ADB? Write down in the comments. Asian Development Bank. Which institute under Indian Council of Agricultural Research has developed the very first indigenous inactivated low pathogenic avian influenza vaccine H9N2 vaccine for chickens? Okay, which institute has launched this? So you just have to name the institute. It is National Institute of High Security Animal Diseases. Option D is the correct answer. And there are total 20 questions today. So thoda sa dhere banai rakhe. Ministry of Jal Shakti in partnership with states is implementing Jal Jeevan Mission to make provisions of tap water supply to every rural households by 2024. Very easy. We all know this. Four states and three UTs so far have been reported as Hargal Jal. That is, every rural household has provision of tap water supply there, which means 100% coverage. The question is, which of the following states or UTs have achieved this? So, which are these four states? These are Goa, Telangana, Gujarat, Haryana. And which are the three UTs? Andaman and Nicobar Islands, along with uh, Dadra and Nagar Haveli and Daman and Diu. Dadra and Nagar Haveli and Daman and Diu and Puducherry. Right. So, these are the four states and three uh, UTs which have achieved the target and therefore the correct answer is option E, all of the above. Question number 12. President Draupadi Mumu recently led the foundation stone for development projects of Bhadrachalam and UNESCO World Heritage Site at Rudreshwar Temple uh, in Ramappa. Both of these projects have been approved under Prashad scheme. Prashad scheme we have studied in the last class, mein hai. that is why I am not repeating it which is Pilgrimage Rejuvenation and Spiritual Heritage Augmentation Drive. Where are these cultural sites located? So, these cultural sites are located in Telangana. Ramappa is in Telangana. I hope you all know this. Option B is the correct answer. Very easy question it was. Question number 13. With which states and Central TV Division Indian Oil has signed an MOU to undertake intensified TV elimination project as part of its CSR, Corporate Social Responsibility. Now, these states are those which have high prevalence of TB and these states are Uttar Pradesh and Chhattisgarh. Therefore, option D is the <coughs> correct answer. Question number 14. Which Government of India enterprise was ranked by Asian Development Bank as top amongst consulting services firm in water and other infrastructure sector 
in its report released on annual procurement it is an important question because it is a government of india owned enterprise and its name is vapcos limited and it is a enterprise under the ministry of jal shakti ministry of jal shakti headed by gajendra singh shekhawat all right gajendra singh shekhawat is the minister and this vapcos limited works towards developing the uh, water infrastructure वॉटर कंजर्विंग इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर वॉटर कंजर्वेशन इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर ठीक है ऑप्शन ए इज द करेक्ट आंसर रिसेंटली अपॉइंटमेंट ऑफ पार्ट टाइम मेंबर्स ऑफ नेशनल मेडिकल कमीशन ऑटोनॉमस बोर्ड इन सर्च कमिटी वॉज डन थ्रू ड्रॉ ऑफ लॉज एज पर प्रोसीजर लेट डाउन इन एन एम सी एक्ट वॉट इज दिन ऑफ दीज अपॉइंटमेंट एज पर दी एन एम सी एक्ट सो नेशनल मेडिकल कमीशन इज नाउ the apex body for recruitment of uh, you know the medical boards या फिर जो सीएमओ uh, होते हैं इन सब के लिए तो दी पार्ट टाइम मेंबर्स ऑफ एनएमसी हैव बीन अपॉइंटेड फॉर अ पीरियड ऑफ टू इयर्स ऑप्शन डी इज द करेक्ट आंसर विच यूनियन मिनिस्ट्री हैज ऑर्गेनाइज्ड कॉन्फ्रेंस ऑन यूनियन टेरिटरीज इन न्यू दिल्ली और इस कॉन्फ्रेंस में कुछ खास हुआ नहीं बस सभी लोग आए और भाषण दे चले गए कुछ बहुत अच्छा लॉन्च हुआ नहीं है सो कॉन्फ्रेंस ऑन यूनियन टेरिटरीज वॉज ऑर्गेनाइज बाई मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ होम अफेयर and this conference was organized under the chairperson ship of mota bhai amit shah amit shah is the union home minister so option a is the correct answer question number 17 where was the national conference on drinking water quality issues and challenges organized by minister of jal shakti supported by unicef and these two foundations so it was organized in kolkata there is nothing uh, there is uh, no Detail required to this question. Option E, Kolkata is the correct answer. That is it. Question number eighteen. The ECTA, Economic Cooperation and Trade Agreement between India and which country came into force on twenty nine December two thousand and twenty two. This question I have taken because you have to remember this date, right? This date is important. When this ECTA came into force between India and Australia. So finally, it has uh, come into force. ठीक है बहुत टाइम से बात चल रही थी अब इसको फाइनली साइन कर दिया गया है एंड इट हैज नाउ अंडर द इंप्लीमेंटेशन 29 दिसंबर 2022 रिमेंबर द डेट क्वेश्चन नंबर 19 वे वाज द सेकंड एडिशन ऑफ नेशनल गंगा काउंसिल मीटिंग चेयर्ड बाय प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदी हेल्ड नेशनल गंगा काउंसिल द एक्स ऑफिशियल चेयरपर्सन इज द प्राइम मिनिस्टर एंड द फर्स्ट एडिशन टुक प्लेस इन कानपुर इन 2019 and now this was the second edition which took place in kolkata option b is the correct answer and the last question for today and it is an easy question with an objective of making quality generic medicines available at affordable prices to all pradhan mantri bjp which is bhartiya jan aushadhi pariyojana was launched by ministry of chemical and fertilizers in november 2008 the question is how many pradhan mantri uh, bhartiya jan aushadhi kendras will be developed will be launched by march 2024 the correct answer is 10000 the target is 10000 and we are we will definitely achieve this target i believe 6 saal mahine pehle hum isko achieve kar lenge theek hai all right guys so that's it for today's session and with this we have completed the uh, year 2022 all the news of 2022 have been covered and yeah i will see you in the next session on friday goodbye take care and god bless